everybody. It's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. Today is September 8th, and the reading was absolutely jam-packed with so many important details. We're going to focus on three things today. The first is, of course, Daniel in the lion's den. That is a wonderful story to, uh, to talk about. The second thing is the 70 weeks. And we're going to really understand that at the end of the lesson today. That is very important to understand, to understand the end times and how today, today's contemporary events fit in with that and what's coming. So I hope that this today's going to give you a foundation to make that very clear. The third thing is the edict of Cyrus for the people, the exiles, to go home. And I'm going to pull in other Old Testament scriptures today to show you the prophecy that this would take place. And today, now we're reading about it actually taking place. So today is going to be a lot of connecting work. If you don't have your notebooks and you do like to take notes, go ahead and, and get that because I'm going to give you a lot of notes today. The first thing we want to talk about, Daniel in the lion's den, we do understand that Darius is the leader of the Medo-Persians. And if we understand world history, remember the Medo-Persians destroyed or I should say conquered Babylon and so the Babylonians were the ones that came in and exiled Judah and Benjamin those two tribes the southern portion of the nation of Israel so now we see the Medo-Persians coming in and um, taking over the the world scene as the world power so they have um, replaced Babylon as the world power now Darius divided his kingdom, because it's a huge world power now, into three different administrations. And he put one person in charge of those three sections, if you will. Under those three leaders, there were 120 direct reports under that. And then the nation would have been further divided into provinces. So we have 123 really key, powerful people in this nation of Medo-Persia. Daniel was one of the top three. So he had a very, very important, powerful position. He is about 80 years old at the time, and he remember worked for Nebuchadnezzar for 39 years so he is a very seasoned administrator and he is actually up for promotion the king has so much respect for Daniel that he wants to put him promote him in charge of everything so the other two would then report into him well these two plus the other 20 direct reports under them are not so excited about that. We don't understand why. All we're told in Scripture is that they really had no reason to doubt his um, supervision because he had administered everything extremely well, and he was an honest man. And so we can really interpret this as uh, just common jealousy and vying for power. So they set out to... Um, destroy not only his credibility but to get him killed and that's why they wanted the king to make this rule that for 30 days everyone had to worship him the king well the king did it and of course because Daniel was a righteous man he practiced his prayers uh, three times a day as he always had and it was of course a trap but that uh, threat of death did not stop Daniel from worshiping his God, which is, uh, which is really neat. And they trap him. They go tell the king. And the king, of course, has put out this, this order and, and made it law. So he has to put Daniel in the lion's den. We see that all night he wasn't very happy about it. And the next morning he rushes out. And, of course, the Lord has kept the lion's mouth shut. A miracle in and of itself. And Daniel is... Um, is is alive and he lives so that uh, that you know the plot was foiled and um, 
there you have it. So Daniel and the lion's den, just a wonderful story. Okay, let's move on to the 70 weeks. Okay, here's where it gets a bit technical. The, we have to understand 70 seven zero sevens and I write it in my notebook as 70 the number and then sevens I write out as a word in quotation marks 70 sevens is actually 490 years if you multiply 70 times 7 you get 490 years now it's kinda weird for us to think about this because we are used to the Dewey Decimal System we're used to groupings of 10 everything you know our math in school we're all taught in, in the base of 10. Well, this was not odd to Israel because they were taught in the base of 7. Their week was 7 days. You know, that they rested every 7th day. Every 7th year was important. Every 70 years was important. So they had a basis of 7. Um, the Babylonian overthrow when Medo-Persia came in was extremely momentous. And it prepared the way for the Jews to return home. You see, there was a prophecy. I want to go back and review that in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11 and 12. Daniel was familiar with this prophecy because he knew his scripture, and it said that the exile would last 70 years. Well, evidently, Daniel has been counting, and he knows that it's coming upon the 70th year, and so he's expecting something to happen. And something does happen. Um, we're going to talk about the Edict of Cyrus in just a minute that allows them to come home. But <clears throat> um, evidently, we read today that Daniel is praying. And God, we see, is answering his prayer in the moment that he prays by sending Gabriel from heaven, who, you know, if you are an angel and you get to be Gabriel, you're pretty lucky because they Gabriel is an angel that gets to send all these wonderful messages. Gabriel's the one that went to Mary. Uh, here, here Gabriel is going now to Daniel. So Gabriel has been dispatched to answer his question that Daniel prayed. What was the question that he prayed? Pretty much it was, you know, Lord, I know the 70 years is ending. Will we be able to go home? What's going to happen? Can you tell me, you know, tell me what's going to happen? So the message that Gabriel sends looks a bit cryptic but it's not let's break it down and I will explain this to you today the message here is something very important is that God's program of discipline for Israel would be over in 70 sevens so just because they're going home is rule number one just because they're going home or point number one doesn't mean their punishment is over their punishment, their program of discipline is going to take place over 77s. Okay, that means 490 years. Now, we have the benefit of so much study, so many good theologians work that I can tell you that we believe and have come to understand those 490 years are not consecutive. In fact, God's program for Punishing and restoring Israel, this is the second point, the 490 years culminates in a blessing for Israel. But this whole plan, this 490 years, can be broken up into three different parts. And you read about those three different parts today when Gabriel was saying there are 60, well there is one seven, and then 62 sevens and then one seven at the end. So we have a seven year period, a 434 year period, and then another seven year period. Now, I've done a lot of study on this. There's a lot out there for you to study on this. It's a whole, uh, there's enough for a whole lifetime of study. But what we understand is that the first seven years and the second 434 years do butt up against each other. They are chronological it's from start to finish in fact I can tell you that the reading today says that it starts the 77s this period of 490 years starts when Cyrus makes his edict 
that the people can return home. Now in another video I talk about there are four edicts, which makes it even more confusing. There are four times they're allowed to go home. They don't go home all at once. But we don't need to worry about that today. Just as a foundation, let me give you a date. It's March 5th. March 5th, 444 B.C. That is the edict that God counted. And then if we look at seven years plus 434 years, it, that period culminates in Jesus riding in on a donkey, proclaiming that the kingdom could come then, that he was the Messiah. Remember everyone waving palm branches as he is riding on a donkey into Bethany. And the people end up not accepting his Messiahship, you recall, and which turned out to be a blessing for the whole world in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The date he rode in on a donkey, March 30th, A.D. 33, was exactly this time period. Okay, You can read about the prophecy of his riding in on a donkey in Zechariah 9.9. 9. So what we just talked about March 5th to March 30th is 69 of the 77s. Okay, and if you multiply that out, that is 483 years consecutive. But there's one more seven. One more seven, which is a seven year period that hasn't taken place yet. You see, what happened when Jesus rose from the dead, it put a stopwatch. It stopped the clock on this whole thing. And now we live in the church age, and the church is allowed to reign and be blessed. We live in the age of grace, and we are living now in the church age. This last seven year period that still has to happen, that will culminate this 77s, this 490 year period is the tribulation period and it will begin with a covenant and the antichrist will make a covenant with israel which three and a half years later he will then break break the covenant and the great tribulation will begin and that last three and a half years will be bad for everyone on the earth and that last three and a half years will end with jesus second coming when israel it looks like the Battle of Armageddon is happening and they're about to be annihilated, but they call on the name of Jesus and he comes in an instant. And I will show you throughout this class that beautiful scripture that tells us what they will pray and that he will just absolutely come in an instant. He will rescue Israel and he will fulfill the promises that God gave to Abraham that still haven't been fulfilled. The covenant promises that include the land and designation that they get and the promise that there will be a kingdom set up with a king which is Jesus reigning over the kingdom and that he will be a holy ruler so you see the 490 years let me sum this up the 490 years <clears throat> means and when it's over, it means that Israel's punishment would have been complete. Punishment for what? The punishment that was back, spoken of by Moses back in Deuteronomy. Remember the blessings and the curses? When they didn't follow the Lord once they entered the promised land and they worshipped other gods and they turned from Yahweh, their God, they the the curses had to come upon them that's one thing that happens at the culmination of this 490 year period their punishment is complete number two in ezekiel 37 23 it says israel will never again worship idols during the millennial period the thousand year reign of christ which begins after his right after his second coming when he comes down to rescue Israel he will begin his millennial reign Jesus will be here on the earth for a thousand years and he will be king not over Israel but king of all the kings in the whole world during that time there will be a period of peace and he will actually it's because he's in charge and Israel will never again worship idols for they will recognize Jesus as their Messiah and there will be worship in Jerusalem and it will be all for him.
what a wonderful thing we have to look forward to. Number three, in Isaiah 60, verse 21, it says God will bring in righteousness. Of course, this is talking about the millennial period. Israel will possess the land forever, the full borders and designation of land that was promised to Abraham back in Genesis. And in Daniel 7, verse 27, it says God will usher in a holy kingdom under one person that everyone will obey. And of course, that is that is Jesus. So the, this 77s that we read about is the culmination and the fulfillment of Israel's punishment, but also the bringing in of this wonderful kingdom that has been foretold throughout all of these different scriptures that are in desperate places that we are trying to pull together. So it's very important to understand that 69 sevens which would have been 408, 400 and, well, I think I said 483 years before, but has already taken place. We are in the church age now, and there is one seven-year seven period yet to go. It's the tribulation period that's coming. At the end of the tribulation period, Jesus comes back. That's the second coming, and that marks the beginning of this thousand-year reign of Christ, which is this kingdom that has been foretold to Israel. Uh, throughout the Old Testament. The third thing we uh, said we would talk about today was the Edict of Cyrus and I just want to point out to you today that we read about the Edict for them to come, for them to go home and that was foretold back in uh, Jeremiah 25, 11 and 12. So we, we there's a lot in the reading today and I hope that I have kind of pulled things together. We will touch on these things again because they are mentioned in so many places in Scripture. When we read about them again, we'll touch on them again. So I hope this gives you just a really good foundation for the God's program of Israel and for Israel. Well, tomorrow we're going to continue reading about the return of the exile. I hope you will be with me then. Blessings to you. Shalom.